Okay guys, <clears throat> this video is gonna be a little longer than most, not by much. I just wanna give you a rundown of what I use to get the results I would get, and I get some great results with this setup. Um, it's cost effective, it's affordable. Um, let's just get off the bat. I'm a Dynagro guy. Right? I use their Bloom, I use their Grow, and I use their Mag Pro. Long story short, bang per buck, 20 bucks, 15 bucks. This was 50 because it was a gallon, otherwise it's 20. You really can't beat what they give you in the PPM ratios. Um, it works out great for me. But I'm going to go over, um, long story short, about Dynagro. Also, a great thing I got to add is it pretty much pHs the water already for you. Um, as you can see, the formulas aren't exactly very light. They're very awesome. I also use General Hydroponics for the silica and their pH up and pH down. But I also use Super Thrive, which is a kelp product, and I use this, which is actually a uh, beneficial bacteria that stimulates root growth. It's actually a bacteria that lives in the water or the soil, and it works really good. You need a sweetener for it, but I'll, um, I'll explain more on that later. Anyway, this is my uh, this is what I do for grow. My initial grow after we get past the seedling phase and we have a real plant, I like to bring it up to 300 ppm. I just hang out with this. I bring this. I get it up to about 200 with this. I take a capful of this at the very most, a capful in my three gallons that I use in my hydroponic setup. As you can see, this stuff is no joke. Quarter teaspoon per gallon, three ounces per 100 gallons. This is a... I don't even know how many ounces bottle, but you get the point. This shit is strong and will fuck up everything. Um, it's a kelp product. It uh, helps with the roots. The roots love it. It is so awesome at helping building a strong root system. I literally pay 10 bucks for this from Home Depot, and I get amazing results with a capful in every bucket that I use, every three gallons, so to speak. I also use silica. Silica is, uh, at first I thought it was kind of a gimmicky thing, but um, it's really not. Uh, silica allows you to have stronger roots by protecting the roots. It provides the roots with a silica type of protection. Because the roots are protected, they're therefore stronger. And what's even more ironic is that means that it can absorb the nutrients better if you use this as it's uh, the NP. It's the K that it provides. I use MagPro in veg as well later on. After about the first week of using this, I change my nutrients out and I put MagPro in. Why would I put a Bloom Booster into a veg... Uh, set up because the simple answer is 98% of your problems yes you with the plant that's turning all light green is magnesium literally I put this in everything I do not just use it as a bloom booster I use it differently when I use it as a bloom booster but I put I want to say I put at least a couple hundred ppms of this into my setup when I'm really going and rocking I'll put more grow in of course but I'll put like like I said if there's like 200 ppms of this, I'll try to put 100 ppms of this. That's the ratio you could use if you want to bump it up a little bit. It works great either way. Like I said, 98% of your problems are coming from this. The other problems coming is you have too much light. Uh, I use pH up and down, which like I said, doesn't really matter much because this setup pretty much handles itself. So I use this, this, and this in veg, right? Then we go into flower. Do I start using bloom? No, I've actually had better success with the old with the old method of saying that the flowering flowering process for the first week is actually still requiring vegetative nutrients. So this formula stays the same. Um, at most, I bring it up to maybe 700 ppm's at the very most. I let the plant stretch out till it's about done for a week or two. I try to keep it on a week and a half or a week, and from there, I uh, stop using this setup. The grow goes away. Um, what I do then is I start using bloom. I add some bloom. I, all in all, I try to shoot for 700 ppm's with everything I'm about to tell you. I start with the bloom formula. Then I add the mag formula, just a little bit of it, the same way I was adding it to grow, um, just to keep the magnesium happy. Um, I keep using the silica. I use the silica uh, quite nicely with that. It helps the roots build up and absorb more of these nutrients. I use the microficial bacteria as well still. What I do with this is I take it. It's a powdery substance. I'll show you. Hang on. Sorry, you jerk the camera on you guys. Powdery substance. Uh, this stuff is also pretty good. Uh, you use one scoop of that per 10 gallons, so you do the math with that. I literally use a quarter of a scoop in like a three gallon bucket of water. Um, this thing is great. The only trade off is that you really need to make sure you do is these beneficial bacteria are living organisms, so you're going to make sure that you have something to feed them. What do you feed them? You feed them starch. Since I'm a cheap, gritty bastard, I use molasses and I dissolve it first in a cup with this stuff, and that provides it with the starch. You want to add these 
once a week to your res because they only live for about a week or two and I really just, you know, for, for what it is, that's how it goes. I would still do that. You keep that going. I still only add a cap full of this. And of course, I keep everything pH'd if I have to, blah, blah, blah. Once we get to about week three and four, when the buds are starting to go, I like to add a little bit more MagPro, still do the bloom. I'd like to keep it under 800 ppm's, 900 at the very most. I still use this, I still use this, I still use this in the same quantities. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy. Always make sure you put starch in to feed the beneficial great white bacteria, or whatever you're using as that product. Um, again, that's how I do it until about the end. And after the fifth week, I stop using the silica because the plant doesn't really need it anymore. Its roots are pretty much good and there's no need to give it more when it doesn't need it. It's really focusing on this. I really try to jump this up too. Not quite as much as I keep this, but I provide a lot because the plant is looking for a lot of magnesium, phosphorus, calcium, all that stuff that comes in a good bloom booster. And this is a good bloom booster for the money. So like I said, let's go over prices real quick. I ride it out. Sorry jumped around there. I ride this out until the end. I don't flush. You can argue with me about it. My shit tastes the same. I've done it with stuff that I've flushed before. If you do it right, if you do this right and you don't fuck it up and over fertilize, you don't need to flush. You don't need to flush. You don't need to flush. Just don't overdo it. A, a blossoming plant never truly needs over like at most 1200 ppms, which I never really have to go to. Um, I stay around the thousand to 1100 at the very most mark for a lot of my bigger plants, but everything seems to be fine at the 900 ppm. I'm not saying it's a fact, I'm just saying it works for me and I have great yields. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over all this one more time. In the beginning, this, 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 and this, right? We ride out with this and we have a little bit of MagPro riding in. Then after we go to flower, we still use this for a week. Then flowering weeks one through four, we still use this, gradually bringing this up after the week of uh gradually bringing this up after the week the first week of flowering which we use the veg nutrients for after that from weeks two to six i want to say from two to four we use all of this after the fourth week we pull this back we still keep using all of this i bring this back up to uh, a more noticeable amount to this i try to keep it in line because that plant is looking for those nutrients like i said so how much does all this cost are you looking to bake, bake the bank break the bank I don't know. It's kind of affordable if you ask me. This is $20. This was $9. This was $10 at Home Depot. This was kind of pricey at 30 bucks, but it kind of lasts a while, so it's worth it. The cheapest you can find. These are Amazon prices. This is $15. And this, because it's a gallon, is 50 but if you get this size of it, it's again 20 bucks. This is 10 and 10. You get yourself a nice pH meter and a uh, ppm meter i suggest you get a nicer ph meter than me my old one broke so i have to rock with this piece of shit but it works i hope um the ppm meter is all about reading this if you want to know about ppms and all that good stuff just remember when you start off you measure your water with the ppms first so if it's 380 ppms out of the tap you now know 380 ppms is what you have to start with so you add enough to this it jumps up to 400 and change it jumps up from 3,800 ppms to about 400. I mean, jumps up 400, so it goes to over 800. You have it like that. You subtract the 388 from the new number that shows up on the meter. Uh, I know I jumped around a little bit during this, but I just want to let you guys know I really believe in this setup. Um, I just really started using it. I used to think a lot of this was bullshit. And really, all you need to know is you need a good grow formula, a good bloom formula, a good bloom booster, good bacteria, a sea kelp product, and some silica and pH up and down. Anything else might work, but it's just not 100% worth the investment. I don't know. That's for you to figure out, but that's me, Gritty Grower. Uh, just explain my feeding regimen. Take care, guys.